My name is Colin Court. Uh, I am an assistant professor at the Mays Cancer Center uh, in the Division of Surgical Oncology, and I'm the director of the Regional Therapies Program here at Mays Cancer Center. Uh, and I, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the role of regional therapies for metastatic uh, colorectal cancer, specifically kind of focusing on uh, hepatic artery infusion chemotherapy, which is a innovative approach that we're using here to treat patients with uh, metastatic colorectal cancer that's spread to the liver. So it's kind of a background for uh, why we use um, uh, hepatic artery infusion. Um, I want to talk about kind of the progress that we've made um, in treating metastatic colorectal cancer on this first slide here. Back in 1989, there were a number of articles being written about how there was really no role for surgery whatsoever uh, in metastatic colorectal cancer. The bottom of this slide here, that by 2018, we had very definitive data that showed that there was clearly a role for surgery for many patients uh, with metastatic colorectal cancer. This is a survival curve here basically showing that at 20 years from the time of resection uh, in patients with metastatic disease, uh, almost 40% of them were still alive. And this really represents the only option for patients that's truly curative, where we can really get rid of the cancer completely. And that's really the goal that we have uh, as surgeons when dealing with this disease, even in the metastatic setting. What I think many of us uh, surgical oncologists struggle with is the fact that uh, that data back from the 70s and 80s that really questioned the role of surgery uh, in these cancer is still kind of in the community in terms of what patients and, and many clinicians hear when they hear the word metastatic cancer, that there is no role for surgery, that it's already spread, and just palliative chemotherapy is the only option. Option. And that really isn't true in the case of metastatic colorectal cancer. As we can see here on this slide, uh, we have multiple different patient groups with different sites of metastasis, both the liver and other areas such as the lungs, the lymph nodes, and the peritoneum. And we see that for many of these patients uh, on this last column over here, five-year overall survival uh, is approaching you know, 20 to as high as 60% for many of these patients. And these patients really at five years are, are really cured of disease, or at least they won't die of their disease. And this is, again, very different than the outcomes if we're only able to use chemotherapy without surgery whatsoever. So this is really the goal of our surgical group here at the Mays Cancer Center, um, as well as kind of nationally some of the efforts that have been placed into using regional therapy for uh, this disease. So switching now to talking about regional therapy on this next slide, there are multiple different regional therapies out there. These three here, HIPEC, HAI, and ILI are the kind of the three most well-known ones. Um, today I'm really going to focus on these two here, which is HAIP or HAIC, which is hepatic artery infusion chemotherapy. This is for liver metastases, primarily from colorectal cancer, which is again the most common site of uh, metastasis in patients with colorectal cancer. Over 50% of patients will at some point or another have a metastasis to the liver. And the other one is uh, HIPEC uh, or hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, and this is used to treat the second most common site of disease, uh, which is the peritoneum. My partner, Dr. Mio Kitano, is going to talk about this more later. So focusing now uh, on this next slide on uh, hepatic artery infusion, um, this is something that's been around for a long time. The original uh, research in this was actually done in the 1960s and 70s, so it is by no means a new technology. Um, but it's something that uh, it came into vogue in the 90s and then kind of went out of favor, and now in the last kind of 10 years has gone from there being five centers nationally to now 73 centers, uh, including ours here. We are the only center in South Texas uh, and one of only two centers in Texas. HAI involves placing about a hockey puck sized uh, pump, which you can see here in the bottom right of the screen, uh, onto the abdominal wall with a catheter that infuses directly into the hepatic artery. Uh, it's placed into something called the gastroduodenal artery, which is the way we access the hepatic artery with this pump. Um, this allows us to both physiologically and pharmacologically isolate the liver. We use a drug uh, called fluxuridine or FUDR that has a very short half-life and go undergoes hepatic clearance, basically meaning that the liver metabolizes it so it never goes into the rest of the body. It only uh, goes to the liver. Uh, many patients with metastatic colorectal cancer, probably all patients with colorectal cancer, uh, are treated with 5-FU. It's kind of the backbone of our chemotherapy regimen, and this is a 5-FU derivative, but allows us to treat with about 400 times the dose of 5-FU that we'd be able to use systemically. Thus, we're able to treat the liver very aggressively um, uh, with this chemotherapy without having any of the usual systemic uh, side effects that we get, such as you know nausea, vomiting, and uh, cytopenia. So uh, from a patient perspective, it's actually much better tolerated than systemic chemotherapy. 
There are a number of indications for this. The main one and the one I'm focusing on today uh, is really about uh, metastatic colorectal cancer with what we call liver dominant disease. And that means that uh, this is really for patients where the majority of their disease is in the liver. It's fine uh, if there's one or two other sites of uh, disease such as the lung or uh, increasingly the peritoneum. Um, that's not a, a contraindication to doing this therapy, but since the majority of the chemotherapy that patients get when they're on this is directed at the liver, it's not a good option when other sites of disease are the main uh, issue at that time. So really focusing on patients where the liver disease is the, uh, the main thing that we're dealing with. And there's really three indications for metastatic colorectal cancer in this setting. The first is adjuvant therapy, so this is after we completely resect uh, all of the tumors in the liver. Then we use pump chemotherapy to prevent recurrence, so it increases our rate of cure uh, in that setting. Neoadjuvantly, this is for patients where surgery isn't an option, and we use this uh, to downstage the liver to the point that we can do surgery. And finally, in the refractory setting, where we use it uh, basically as a line of therapy itself after other uh, chemotherapies have stopped working. The other main uh, indication for it is unresectable cholangiocarcinoma, um, uh, but these are really the two uh, indications we use it for currently here. One thing to note though is that when I talk about HII therapy, it is not truly just the pump chemotherapy, it is a combination of the uh, pump chemotherapy going directly to the liver as well as the systemic chemotherapy patients are on anyways. However, the systemic chemotherapy is at a lower dose. Usually the side effect profile uh, while on pump chemotherapy is much less than when on systemic chemotherapy alone. So moving on to this next slide here, I wanted to talk about one uh, recent patient situation we had here. If you look at this CT scan, all of the dark areas here uh, are areas of tumor and you can see there's extensive metastasis. In fact, there's more cancer in the liver than there is normal liver here. Clearly, the patient at this point in time was not resectable. Um, after three months of HAI on systemic full theory or standard second line therapy, you can see here a dramatic response in the liver. And at the end of six months of HAI therapy, uh, which is kind of our, our standard length of therapy for HAI, you can see that these tumors have shrunk to the point that surgery is now an option uh, and we can uh, you know, attempt a curative intent resection. It's important to note that the way the pump is put into the gastroduodenal artery, um, it, it really is a one-time uh, thing. We get one chance at putting it in, um, and there are ways to place a second pump, but it's very difficult. And so we generally tend to leave these pumps for as long as there's any risk of recurrence. So that often means the patients will have these pumps for as long as five or 10 years, because again, it is the most effective therapy for those liver metastases. Um, the two kind of restrictions uh, with pump chemotherapy are one, anything that increases the pressure uh, in the abdomen. Um, the main one that uh, is a concern here is scuba diving. So you can't go scuba diving when you have a pump. Uh, I know that sounds like a silly restriction, but you'd be shocked if you tell people for five years every time they come in that they can't go scuba diving. The only thing they want to do at the end of five years is go scuba diving. So uh, it's, I think this is a push for the uh, uh, scuba diving industry to get more, more people. The other main one is because your own body heat is what uh, drives the rate of the pump, uh, no hot tubs um, is the other major restriction there. So what are kind of the benefits when we look at this? Well. Uh, you know, looking at that last patient scan, uh, you can see that uh, patients who get HAI have a tendency uh, to get to surgery more often because, again, it shrinks the tumors the most in the liver. We can see here uh, for patients who had a complete resection of their liver, uh, all tumors in their liver, excuse me, uh, the uh, patients who had HAI therapy on top of it, generally, uh, if we look down here at the end here, uh, more of them were alive when we get out to kind of that six to ten to longer periods of time. And that indicates to us uh, that this therapy is one that really cures more patients. And, and that's really the goal here uh, when we talk about surgery in colorectal liver mats. Um, it, it's cure, it's not just prolonging survival, it's trying to get patients to cure. Once patients have kind of progressed on the first two standard lines of chemotherapy, there's really only two options, which is Lonsurf, uh, which is here. Uh, and um, uh, regorafenib. Uh, Lonsurf, the response rate in this setting after progressing on all standard lines of chemotherapy was only 1.6%. So less than two in 100 patients are responding to this therapy. And uh, that's really the only uh, accepted third line therapy. If we compare that to 
uh, on this next slide, uh, you know, pump chemotherapy in that setting, so progressed on all lines of therapy, the response rate can be as high as 35%. And so that's really the other way we use uh, this pump is uh, for patients who don't really have any other options and we're using this as uh, an option for chemotherapy in patients who don't really have another option. Uh, again, with response rates as high as 35%, and some of these patients are actually able to get to curative uh, intense surgery. You know, this is my area of expertise, is metastatic colorectal cancer, and on this final slide here, uh, I, I just want to mention that uh, I also have a lab here um, uh, specifically looking at um, the way the immune system interacts with both liver and peritoneal metastases and trying to find ways that we can help patients' immune systems uh, better recognize these cancers and fight them off uh, themselves. Thank you.